Hi, Cara. How are you? I'm well. How are you, Scott? I'm very well. It's a bit warm in London today, but that's maybe a good thing. I don't know. It's quite humid. We're, we're not good. With, we don't like humid in London. I was going to say, like, uh, that's usually not the case there, but is it a nice change or not really? Uh, the sun being out is always a nice change. The yeah. humidity, we don't, we don't like the humidity. So... I don't know, 50 50, I guess. I hear you. <laughs> uh, congratulations on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm someone that doesn't like to binge watch. I like the old school, one week at a time kind of deal. But with this, it was very compulsive viewing, given the subject, given everything else. Uh, so I wonder, was it, are you someone like that? Are you someone that enjoys the binge watching, or do you enjoy kind of episode by episode? Because you're part of two shows that, are doing kind of a bit of both at the minute. Right, right. You know, it's interesting because both the shows, um, I guess the latest trend now is to do half and half, right? Like we do four and then five. Um, I think that sort of maybe tries to satisfy everybody. I, it's frustrating, right? Because like I, you know, if you watch something once a week, it gives you the opportunity to talk to people and, you know, the anticipation and, connect with people online if there's you know any kind of fan theories about shows and things like that so i enjoy that uh but sometimes if i really love a show i'll just wait till they all air and then yeah you know try to like i kind of did that with game of thrones because i knew i couldn't wait i, I, do I that. think that's the thing though isn't it with social media and everything people just can't wait because of i guess because of spoilers people don't like things being spoiled in the same way that they weren't when i was a kid you never had that right. when i was a kid oh, when you were a kid it was very very different very um different. with the girl yeah, very different. So with the girl from Plainville, I mean, it's a, a subject matter that's that's quite quite new. You know, it was only, it's a case within the last 10 years and all that kind of stuff. So when you read the script for the first time, were you at all hesitant that maybe it was too soon? Or did you think, oh, actually, this is maybe the right time to tell this, given the subject matter and given, you know, the people involved and what what they've what they've been through with all of this? Yeah, well, frankly, I when I when I heard of making a show, I knew about the case and I thought, well, in a way, why? And I was not, I was curious because I thought, well, it's such a dark, it's such a tra- tragic situation. How can the story be told in a way that, you know, I had like my preconceived notions, right? So I think most people would come to this story having their preconceived notions. And I think what the writers had done um, in a beautiful way was to really um, peel back the layers of what each of the, you know, Gail Carter and Coco were going through um, in their families and their life from like a perspective of mental health, technology, social media. And these were like in the earlier days of that before we know. And now we know there have been studies about, you know, the, how problematic it can be. Um, so I think I was drawn to it because I did a really beautiful job of um, showing the complexity of, of the characters. And, you know, not every, there's no, it's like, these are the good guys and these are the bad guys. It's, it's, they really were able to draw a really thorough picture of everybody. Um, and I think it just speaks to people's, you know, humanity about what everyone's going through. You just never know what people are going through. Yeah. And for you guys, obviously you're playing your dramatized versions, but you are playing real people who have been through these real things. Does that change your, the way you go about your job? Does it change, you know, cause obviously you're dealing with, with people's lives and well, as I say, it's a, it's a fictionalized version in some respects, you're still, having to play the, the real people in some respects. Does that change the way that you approach a character or the material, particularly with something like this? Well, sure. This was um, the first time I played a character based on a real life person. And Gail Carter did not give any interviews. So there, were, there was nothing for me to watch, even if I, I would have wanted to uh, watch it. Uh, I, I saw the documentary and I familiarized myself with the case, but my character is a, you know, a, a kind of creation, the showrunners, the writers, and, and I would kind of said, well, who is this person? We're going to, it's a fictionalized idea of who she is in relationship to her daughter and kind of creating it based on the dynamic based, as opposed to anything that we know from real life because we don't have anything. So I think it was like easier for me because I think there is a responsibility you have when it is a real person. Um, especially to the subject matter, um, the sensitive subject matter of the show. 
Yeah. And you obviously you've had a, a long illustrious career and you've been around kind of younger performers and seeing them, you know, come to come to into, you know, mature and everything else. Obviously, with Stranger Things, you're surrounded by these kids that you've kind of they've grown up in front of your eyes. And Elle Fanning is someone that's kind of done that. She's grown up on screen and now she's become this formidable actress. What? Why do you think she is so kind of revered at the moment? Because she's making such kind of amazing choices in why she's not afraid to take on roles that maybe not everybody would have would have gone for. She is absolutely remarkable. I think she's perfect. <laughs> I think Elle Fanning is perfect. I, um, you know, watching her work is like a lesson for everybody, people, you know, 40 year olds, like she is professional. She's down to earth. She's prepared. She's her, her work is like otherworldly. She's exquisite. I mean, I'm so impressed with her. I loved her on, you know, watching her on The Great, which is so different. Mm. Um, you know, she's she's a naturally gifted actress. You know, she's obviously naturally talented, but she works so hard um, and she cares so much. I mean, I'm just, I'm totally fangirling on her. I mean, I, I'm so impressed <laughs> by her, but I, I mean it, it's like from the bottom of my heart, I just think like she's just uh, astonishing in every way. And, and she's so young. You know, so it's just I can't wait to see what else that, that she does. Yeah. And just yeah. as a final question, we've just seen the trailer for as we record this volume two of Stranger Things. Are you as a performer as excited to see what is going to happen in, in these last two, you know, film length episodes as everybody else? Because everyone is just like so, so excited to see what's going to happen next. Um, you in volume two that's coming out July 1st. Yeah. Yeah. I've already seen it. So, You've seen um, it, so I'm very excited <laughs> for people to see it. It's it's I'm always blown away by it. I just think, you know, in, in a fourth season of a show to maintain that level of surprise and mm. storytelling and commitment to um, authenticity of the era and, you know, watching. I love watching all the actors grow up, like you said, like, I love, you know, I started acting when I was really young, like when I was 12. Uh, doing yeah, of course, yeah. Of I mean, I, you know, it was a different time. There weren't as many opportunities then. It's, it wasn't mm. like an adult world of acting, but you know, like Winona and I kind of started around the same, she started when she was really young. Um, yeah. she did a lot more stuff. I did like a lot more TV and theater. So I was like these kids ages and, um, I didn't know how long I would keep acting. And I just love being around them and watching them grow up and, and just seeing like the amazing performances by everybody, Sadie, you know, Millie's every, every year is amazing. Everybody, all the kids. It's just, uh, it's really beautiful. Yeah. Super excited. Uh, congratulations on the show again, Cara. And thank you so much for your time. Hope it, uh, hope it goes down really well for you. Thank you so much. It's nice. Thank to you meet so much. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? Big, yeah. Nice. Hey, 